Hi, I'm Chris McKenna and welcome to Exam Debug. Today we're going to be looking at the second class on operating systems. So we're going to be looking at interfaces or user interfaces. So user interfaces are the way in which humans can communicate with the computer. And this is something that, as we mentioned last time, that is provided by the operating system. It's one of the key features of an operating system is to provide interfaces for the user. So the first type of interface we're going to be looking at is called a GUI. Or usually we just say GUI, like sticky, something is GUI. So a GUI, or GUI, stands for Graphical User Interface. So this is when we use pictures and images as a way of showing different parts of the computer system. So we use pictures and images to interact with the computer. So a GUI has four main features. And those four main features we usually remember by saying WIMP. So WIMP is the four features of a graphical user interface. And these include Windows, so as I'm sure you've seen before, there are, you can get lots of different windows up. Icons, which are little pictures. Menus, which drop down from the top of your windows usually. And we have some kind of pointing device, in our case a mouse, for controlling, a pointing device for controlling how we click on or interact with these three things above. So that's windows, icons, menus, and pointing devices. So let's have a look at that on our screen. Okay, so welcome to my desktop. Um, I've recently installed Windows 10, but that's okay. Um, I can navigate easily because Windows 10, like Windows 7, has the standard features of a graphical user interface, or a GUI. So we have, here we can see I have Windows, so these are my videos that I've been making for class. And here I have some, some folders with all the different things that uh, I've been collecting for whatever reason. And these of course are icons, but maybe a better way to look at it is on my desktop. So I've got, say like Lightworks, which I use for editing videos. I can access the program this way. Or I can go into different folders um, and I can get different information that way. So if I go into here, I can see this was a course I was doing before. I've got all my saved files and I've got icons to represent those files. And I have icons and pictures of icons to represent the folders as well. Uh, likewise, it's a bit bigger, we have menus. So up in the top corner here, we have, we have different menus that drop down. Um, again, this is a little bit different in Windows 10, so often a menu is going to drop down a bit more this way, but this seems to work. And so I've got Windows, icons, menus, and of course, I almost forgot, I've got my pointing device. So to be able to move the windows, I use my cursor. That's this thing here, which I control with my mouse. I can move my windows, I can select my menus, or I can click on my different icons as well. Okay, so to practice that, if you could try, just very quickly, if you could sketch out, either on paper or on your computer somewhere, if you could sketch out an example of a window, or sorry, an example of a, a operating system that's running, and it should have the four features of a graphical user interface, or a GUI. And you label those four features as well. Okay, moving on. So the other main type of user interface is the CLI. And CLI stands for Command Line Interface. So I mean, let's have a look at a command line interface. Okay, so going from my desktop, um, I can actually come down here and I can type CMD. 
and it will come up with this option for command prompt. So let's open that up. So Windows actually has two ways to interact with it. You can use the graphical user or you can use the command prompt. And mine, ah, here we go. It's going very slow for some reason. So, or you can use the command prompt. So the big difference between a CLI and a GUI is the command line interface, you are typing the interactions. You don't have these nice little pictures. You don't have the pictorial representation. Everything is done through typing. Now that sounds quite hard, but it can actually have a lot of advantages. Uh, think about um, maybe you play some computer games. Uh, for example, if you were playing Diablo or some game where you have fast interaction. Is it easier always to go down and click on things to make them happen fast? Or is it easier to use shortcuts on your keyboard? So for people who are big gamers, often they'll know the shortcuts on their keyboard because it's a faster way to interact. And it can be that way with a command line interface. So um, to do this, I'm going to go, let's see, I'm going to go to my H drive. So to do that, I type H colon, and that will bring me this. Now I can see what's on that drive by typing PIR or directory. So this is a way of looking into this folder. And I've made a little folder here just for playing about with called files. So if I want to change the directory, I can type cd files. And that's the same as double clicking, if you like, on the files folder icon. Oops, that didn't work. Ah, I missed an S. Okay, cd files. <laughs> Not a good start. Um, but this is one of the big problems of um, using command line interfaces is you have to type everything correctly, I'm sure to make many mistakes. So again, if I have a look inside files, you see that I have a directory called test and I have some batch files here. So what I can do is I can access those files just by typing the name. So I'm going to go and look at text file and if I right click on that, it will open the text file for me. It will run the program associated with that name. So that's one thing we can do here. We can interact with things in the same way as in Windows, but we run them from the command line. Um, we can also move things around. We can create things. So let's say I want to create a, de create a directory. I would have to type mkdir. And I'm going to call it, last time I made a test, so this time I'm going to call it um, batch files. So I'm making a directory called batch file with an S. So you need to be careful. Batch files. So now if I type dir, dir, you see I have a directory called batch files. And I can go into it, cd. batch files and you can now see I'm in H files batch files this is my location and if I type there you see this is empty this is just this these are going back and forward directories later you don't need to worry about that but you can see there are zero files and two standard directories okay so I can move files about, for example, I can go back the way if I want by typing cd dot dot or cd full stop full stop. And that moves me back one level. In the, so I was in cd file, cd files, batch files, I'm now in h files. Sorry, cd, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, and if I type there, I can see what's in there. So let's say I want to move my batch file, which is batch file dot bat. So let's say I want to see their, all the batch files. Their star dot bat. So I can see there is one file, and it's called batch file dot bat. So I want to move that into my folder called batch file. So I can either copy or I can move it. So in this case, I'm just going to copy it. So I'm going to copy, and I'm going to copy batch file dot bat. 
and I'm going to copy it into my directory called batch files. I hit return. So it's copied, so it should still be in here. So I still have the file in here. But if I go to the directory, and I look in here, you'll also see that I have batch file bat. Um, maybe I want to delete the old one. So I can come in here and I can just type bell batch file dot bat. And if I have a look in here, it's now gone. But I still have a copy in my batch files folder. And I could move that back. To the dot dot means to the directory below. So right click there, this one's empty, cd dot dot, and in, oops, inside files I have batch file dot bat. And I think I can rename and I'm gonna call it and now if I have a look in the directory. You see, I have batch files copy. Okay, so you're not expected to know any of those commands or anything like this. This is not important necessarily for your IGCSE, but it is very helpful to get a feel with it. So, what I want you to do is try having a practice, try playing about with, with the command prompt and see what you can do with it there. Okay, so back to the slides here. So yeah, so try making a new directory, copy files about, rename them, move them around, so that you can get a feel of what it's like for dealing with a command line interface. Okay, and then once you've done that, um, oh, extra. Um, it's not part of the course, but one of the really fun things that you can actually learn to do is to do batch files on your computer. So if you can learn some of the command prompt lines, you can make files that will run a series of commands automatically. So try it out, see, see what you can do. See if you can get it to move all of the files of one site from one place to the other. Uh, we're going to do this in my class. Um, it's up to you if you want to go that little bit further because it's not part of IGCSE. Okay, so um, what we're going to do next is think about a comparison. So I imagine you've all had lots of experience using a graphical user interface and hopefully you've now had some experience using a command line interface. So hopefully in pairs, if you have people around you, if not, if you could sit down and try and make out a little t-chart showing the benefits or negatives even of each type of interface. Alright, so hopefully you've made a little t-chart. Um, again, some of them will be listed, some of them might not, so as long as you can give a good explanation, it's probably okay. But uh, here are the main ones that we want to be considering today. So graphical user interfaces are much easier to learn. Um, they're very, what we'd say, intuitive. So you feel naturally where everything should be. It, it's almost designed to look almost real world like so you're touching real objects to some extent and they're actually far better for multitasking so if you're jumping between different tasks if you're jumping between different applications uh, graphical user interfaces are much better than using a CLI uh, on the CLI side you do have to learn more commands so that's uh, a negative but usually command line interfaces give you a lot more system control. So if you look at programmers or you look at other people who are doing things that are more complex with the computer, uh, they tend to be using the CLI. So it's maybe for more advanced users. Um, as we mentioned before, when it came to like games and things, it, it can actually be much faster. If you know what you're doing, you can achieve a lot more in a very short space of time. But you have to learn the commands and it uses less system resources so showing all those pictures, showing the windows, showing the menus it doesn't happen by magic 
behind each and every one of those things there are programs running and those programmings those programs even use up a lot of the system's resources um, if you think back to the kernel so the kernel is having to distribute those um, tasks so if it's, if it's con constantly listening for you for example clicking on a, a picture or clicking on an icon that's going to take a certain amount of processing power so if you have a, a low system resource computer um, you know for example a Raspberry Pi which does have a graphical user interface but maybe with something like that it's better to use a command line interface to interact with it when you have low system resources. But in short, GUIs are really good for standard users uh, where the CLI is maybe for more advanced users with a, a complex understanding um, for when they're doing complex tasks. Even, even advanced users will still use a graphical user interface on a day-to-day -day basis. And so the other thing is there's now these what we call post wimp uh, graphical user interfaces coming out. So it used to be that you had Windows icons, my, uh, Windows icons, menus and pointing devices for your GUI. But now because of, especially because of smartphones, the way we interact with the devices have become very different. So we can use motions like swiping and pinching and these have all kind of moved on from when you're using big desktop computers. Uh, so it, WIMP is kind of, it's, I won't say out of date, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily fit for say modern graphical user interfaces on small devices or on portable devices at least. And touch screens even big touch screens are making a big difference in this area as to how we interact with them. So anyway, think about it. Let's say Nokia. Nokia hasn't been doing very well of late, although they're a fantastic company. Um, but they've struggled to get into the new market versus iPhones and versus Android. Um, they did have Windows on them for a while, but Windows Phone has not been very successful. So let's say Nokia comes to you you're a specialist in human-computer interaction. How would you design a brand new interface for a new phone? Now be very careful because if you use the features Android has or you use the features that uh, iOS has, you're going to get sued. Because um, unfortunately, many of these companies like to, to sue each other in their ways of interacting. And they've copyrighted some of these movements, actually. So if you were to start again, given that other things are all banned, not all banned, but a lot of them are, are restricted, how would you make a new phone with a new type of interaction so that Nokia can catch up with it? Um, ideally, you draw some pictures to show, and if you're in a class, hopefully we can present it together. Or if you have some ideas, you can send them in, make a video of your new interaction, and I'll put them online and connect them to this video as well. Anyway, so that's it for operating systems. Um, I know that's quite a short one, but it's just a, a bit of a lead-in, and we'll be going on to other stuff in the near future. So, like I said, send us your videos, and please subscribe to this channel, and you can check out our website, which is examdebug.com. It's still under construction, but you might be able to find other things there as well. So until then, thanks very much for your time and good luck with your exams.